It's me, Nimsoni. Welcome back to another VR video. Today's video is a little bit unusual. I'm not showing off any fun stuff or cool stuff. I'm actually doing a tutorial. Now, this is actually just going to be a short tutorial. Well, I say short, it's probably going to take about 20 minutes. Uh -huh. um, it's just going to be a tutorial on some of the most basic stuff, uh, concepts of VR in Unity. Uh, I'm on a few Discord servers and um, one of the things that I've noticed a lot of people ask is for a bit of help with the prefabs that come with the Oculus integration. So the Oculus integration is the asset you want. Um, grab it from the asset store, it's the first thing you need to do. Uh, so here we've got a, a brand new project anyway, it's just a scenes folder that comes with your brand new project. I've already loaded up the asset store page because anything that requires the internet means slow unnecessary so i've already loaded up the page all you have to do is type oculus in the search for assets and uh, go on the oculus integration as you can see here let me just load up the package here and i'll explain what we're going to do so you'll notice that a lot of people they always seem to show the most basic easy to easy way to start with vr in unity is to grab yourself uh, these plugins and whatnot and use the prefabs that come with them i'm going to show you how to do some basic VR tracking, so you're gonna you do head tracking, hand tracking, and some of the inputs without using the prefabs themselves. So, uh, first thing we're gonna do, import the package. Now, you'll notice something that I'm not suggesting anyone else do, but I'm going to do it myself, uh, just to save some space and save a bit of time. Um, I'm not going to import the entire package, only the VR section of the package. That's all we need. Um, we don't even, there's some of the things in there we don't even need. But that's all we're going to need for this tutorial. I would suggest you import the whole thing just in case, but I know exactly what we need for this tutorial, so I'm just going to import only that. Um, and I'm going to hit that import button and get that started. Now, the first thing we're going to want to do after this is actually start up our project settings and switch the VR on. I believe I've actually already done that because I just tried to record this video and got stopped halfway. <laughs> so I'm going to show you that anyway. Um, which you should probably know. So that's something I should probably su suggest as well here. Um, this video is not for people who are just starting with Unity. Uh, oh, when this popular uh, pop-up comes up, hit yes. You want to use the newest plugin for Unity um, that you've just downloaded from the uh, from the asset store there. Uh, now, yeah. So this is not for people who are starting with Unity and want to start with VR. I'm gonna make this suggestion, and believe me, you really, really want to follow it. Do not start your game engine knowledge with VR. Just learn Unity by itself. If you're new to Unity, learn Unity. If you're new to Unreal, learn Unreal. Do not try and learn VR and the engine at the same time. There's just no point. All right? You're going to make things hard for yourself. You're going to make mistakes that you wouldn't have made otherwise. So I'm just going to move this cable out of the way and pop over to project settings, player settings. Uh, you will notice I actually put my project settings there in the corner. You obviously load it up from the edit section up there. Um, and switch on the virtual reality supported checkbox. And when you do that, it'll load up both Oculus and OpenVR into the project. I've removed OpenVR uh, using the little minus thing there. Um, on purpose, because I don't want it accidentally glitching at any point and then loading Steam VR, which is just going to slow me down while I'm recording a video. All you're going to need is, obviously, your Oculus will automatically load once you start up any program that uses Oculus. And obviously, switching on that checkbox. So this is a basic scene, completely what you get from the start when you press new. And I'm going to show you how quickly you've got head tracking in into VR in Unity. You've already done it. Success! You just press play and... Da -da 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 -do 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 -do. You have head tracking. As you can see, I'm moving my head tracking now. I'm moving my actual headset, I'm just holding it in my hand. And you can see it just it just comes on. As long as the virtual reality supported checkbox is on, head tracking will happen by default. You can't actually switch it off, but it is active by default. Now the first thing you're going to want to do with the actual scene is you're going to want to get a nice rig setup. So obviously, like I said, we would be using prefabs at this point. So people will delete the current camera and load in the actual sort of OVR pl player controller or the camera rig. We're going to create our rig from scratch. So the main camera itself, any camera in the scene is getting head tracking when we press play. 
any camera that's live uh, for the actual screen. So anything that shows in the game window. I'm going to actually move that game window over here and make, it, make things a little bit easier. Um, but the camera doesn't track in global position. It actually tracks local to its parent. So right now, by default, obviously, the camera is actually in the scene directly. What we want to do then is create a parent for the camera. I'm going to call it camera rig. So there we go. That's our camera rig. That's just a tra uh, uh, empty game, game object. I'm going to place him at 0, 0, 0, and then throw the main camera under that as a child. So you can see the little arrow. Um, now position your main camera at 0, 0, 0 within the, within the camera object. And you'll notice now, within the camera rig, sorry. And you'll notice now that it is obviously inside the camera rig. If you move the camera rig, you move the camera. And what you're actually doing by doing that, you're not actually moving the camera itself. The head tracking is overriding any position that you set to the camera object itself. Head tracking overrides anything. So there's no point trying to do anything to that camera. So if you want to move your player, it needs to move the whole rig. This rig, consider it to be your room scale room. The player does whatever he wants within that room scale and he'll move the camera inside the room. But the room itself you can't modify anything under that under that um, position because that the tracking handles that. Instead, you can move the whole room to move your player in the game. So now we're going to need some controllers. This is where the OVR plugin actually needs to be active using its OVR manager. If we pop into the Oculus VR folder into the scripts folder, you'll see that you've got a bunch of the OVR plugins uh, special scripts here. You've got display haptics. Uh, you've got input which is over here and then we've got OVR plugin and platform and stuff like that and this is the one we want OVR manager so we're going to throw that onto our camera rig it can be on any object as long as it's active in your scene there we go and that gives us a few settings as well that we should have access to so things like this uh, tracking level tracking origin tracking origin is very useful because it actually switches between room scale and not room scale that's the only true differences, uh, two, two actual formats that you can use in VR. And all it does is it changes where your center point is. Eye level um, is actually, your, your origin for eye level is at the center of your camera object, your, your camera rig. So this is the zero, zero, zero point. If we press recenter in your VR game, it'll move your camera so that your zero point is where you're standing now. So it'll center it right on the zero, zero, zero. That's because of the camera rig's uh, OVR manager, of course. If you switch that to stage, you've got room scale, I believe. I haven't really tested it in room scale and stuff, uh, but it usually disables things like the recenter and stuff for that, for, for Steam VR and whatnot. What we want to do now is obviously get some controllers in. Now, the normal way to do this is to throw in the prefabs here, the controller prefab here. And that decides based on what device the user's using, which mesh to show. All we want to do is throw in a test mesh just for the, for the sake of it. So I'm going to use the default Oculus Touch because, you know, I've got an Oculus Touch, uh, you know, original CV1. And you can see here, we've got the two models provided to us in the, uh, in the actual Oculus, Oculus plugin. Left controller here, right controller here. Let's just throw them in and you'll notice something. I'm actually going to put them under the camera rig and you'll notice something very particular about them. If I remove the gizmos, I'm going to move the left controller a little bit to the left and the right controller a little bit to the right. I like to put them at somewhat like 0.2 or 0.1 or something. Um, but you'll notice something very particular here. I've got the pivot point set to the pivot of the object and in local space. And that shows us where our tracking point actually is on that mesh. So this is actually the correct tracking point that we will be receiving from the plugin, from the drivers. The same for the left touch controller. Now the way Oculus works is it does this for all of their controllers. So if we threw in something like the, the new touch style and we positioned that exactly at the same place as this one, you'll notice that it matches up 
pretty much exactly. Whoops, wrong, wrong object to move there. It matches up exactly as to where that controller is. That's because all of Oculus's um, controllers, remotes and everything like that, uh, for Gear VR and everything that is supported by this driver is centered around that same pivot position. Very, very important because that makes it really easy for us. We don't have to do any adapt adapting, uh, you know, uh, offsets or anything like that when we do the tracking. Let's get on with our actual tracking. So obviously, these are positioned wherever they, they want to be. That position doesn't matter because it's going to be overridden by the tracking. We're going to write a very simple script now. So back, up, back out all to your assets. We're going to create our special script, which is, I'm just going to call it camera rig. Or in fact, let me call it VR rig. There we go. Very, very simple stuff. Load it up. And you'll notice, as usual, I'm using Notepad Plus. So usual business, I'm going to clear that up. And in fact, we don't really need our start function right there. All we're going to do because you'll notice something, the thing with the, the thing with VR is the default settings, like I mentioned before, your camera will automatically be tracked unless you disable that, you know, specifically. But the controllers, they're not. You have to do that manually. You can't place them in world space, but you can place them in local space. And it's literally as simple as setting one line for the position, one line for the rotation. So in four lines, you, you've got full tracking on your controllers. First thing we want to do is access the actual controllers themselves. So we want the transform of the controllers. So we're just going to set their position and rotation. Um, hand left, or should I say touch left? There we go. Touch L and touch R. That's it. Nice uh, names for our objects. And we'll just move over here because I'm actually going to load up an Oculus script to have a look at what we should be doing. So all we're going to do, throw our script onto our rig. Place our left touch there and our right touch there. We now have access to our transforms. We're going to set their positions very soon. Go back into your Oculus VR folder and go into your scripts once again. This time, load up the actual OVR input. You'll notice this is quite a large file. So I'm just going to scroll right through. Very, very large file. We've got 3,400 lines of code in there. Um, and this actually has pretty much all of the functionality that you need to access your VR tracking and your VR um, actual buttons and inputs for all of your controllers. The way we're going to do it is actually if we search the get local, you'll see that we've got a function in here, which is static. It gives a vector three because obviously we're going to be get, grabbing our position and it's called get local controller position. It takes a, a parameter controller. That's a that's an enum within this uh, within this script within the OVR input class. So let's let's run this out. We're going to want OVR input, which is our static uh, class that we're accessing, and we're going to want get local position. Right. So we're going to do this to the local position of each of our touch controllers. We'll start with the touch L dot local position, very specifically local position. It's not a, a world position. We're not setting its position because then we won't be moving within our camera rig. We're setting its local position within the camera rig just the same way that the camera tracking works. And we're going to set it to our OVR input, get local controller position. And then of course, our parameter in there will be the controller that we're accessing. So we're going to want, oop, we're going to want OVR input again. Dot controller dot. What controller do we want? So obviously we know that controller is an enum within this folder, within this file. So search that and there we go. We've got a nice list. L touch is the one that we want for left touch. Right touch is the one that we want for the right touch. But there is one more called touch. Now this is actually a sort of combined generic one that they've got. And this allows you to basically use either or if you're using one controller for your game or application. Uh, Oculus will basically determine which one's the active controller and give give that control. So you can ba basically use like button one and button two on that controller, whatever that controller is, and the player kind of decides. We're going to do this very specific. We're going to be specific about which controller we want. So we're going to grab our left touch and throw that on to here. 
for our for our lo local position for touch L. We'll duplicate that and of course do the same thing for touch R using our R touch. And let's test it. Very, very simple code. Throw it back into here. Like I said, it's literally two lines. I'm just going to go out to assets, just I don't want to touch any of that stuff. So you can see here our camera rig, we've already placed the two transforms. We're going to press play and see what happens. And remember, I've moved my, our game screen over to there. And none of my controllers are currently active. So let me just grab my controller setup and do all the usual business. Now you'll notice that the controllers started moving. So here we are. I'm actually able to move my controller and you can see it's actually in front of my headset. Obviously it's not rotating because we haven't set its rotation. This is happening for the left controller and I'm going to put that down, activate my right controller and you can see my right controller is also moving. If I grab them both, I'm just sort of holding my headset right now. You can see if I grab them both, they're both moving. This is completely tracking, no extra work, just two lines of code my headset down and do exactly the same for rotation very very simple stuff let me just move these controllers over to there so same thing duplicate those lines did i just say duplicate gosh um very useful thing in notepad plus i don't know if this is a standard thing uh, but you can just sort of hold shift and alt and sort of select multi-line so i'm just going to type multi-line at the same time so now we're going to affect the local rotation exactly the same thing as before we're gonna do get local but this time we don't want the position we want the controller rotation so it's exactly the same function except different name select that swap them both there we go so now we have controller rotation and controller position we already set our left touch and right touch for those little functions because we just duplicated the lines and in four lines we can press play grab our headset put the little sensor on with our thumb and now you can see rotating hand tracking perfectly all easy very very easy literally four lines of code or should we say six because you kind of have to grab the transforms not really important all basic unity stuff that's it that gives us tracking i'll probably do a part two of this video but before we get to that let me just show you one more thing You'll notice that when I move the camera forward, when I move the head close to the controller, it's cutting up. Oop, let me just get into the sensor. You can see it's actually clipping out. That's because we've got, and you can see just on the left here, right there, that are, uh, just on the right there, sorry, uh, that our clipping planes are cutting those out. All we have to do is change that. I like to set it to 0.03. I believe the Oculus uh, prefab does it as 0.01. Now, if you have a look in the scene, you'll notice that I can move the controller a little bit closer now and it doesn't get clipped up. That's literally it. It's just the clipping plane. And you'll probably have noticed that in some games that sort of didn't, didn't actually do the checking for those settings. I noticed it in one of the recent videos uh, from Mike Oasis' VR video where he was showing the Thermoreal uh, demos and they had the clipping plane set to 0.3 the defaults which is uh, problematic because as you put your hands closer it, it cuts out anyways that that's the basics that that gives you the basic tracking i'll probably do a part two just to give you the inputs and it, again it's almost as simple as this um so stay tuned thanks for watching anyway hopefully this ain't too long goodbye